And it's chapter 15, which is obviously out of order because you will want to use it as you go through the three parts of the uh, plan that you're going to develop for your client. So this figure actually, it, it is like um, advertising, uh, also has this kind of a, a structure where you basically, you, you listen, you set objectives, you create strategies and decide to whom you're going to target them. Then you go through the implementation and then you monitor and measure adjust and do it all over again. And social media marketing is not all that different. You have different tools. You also have a different uh, way to monitor the efficacy of what you've put into place. And there's a lot of listening that occurs in advance. In other words, you have to go and be with your audience and see what it's like to walk in their shoes before you decide how you're going to differentiate yourself or your client. So to write a plan, there are mm, a dozen elements to it. And this is good for your endeavor for this activity, this course project client. Um, this is the way you do it in the real world. Uh, even though this book is from 2016, it's still the way you do it in the real world. So, or 2019, whatever it is. Um, but it's still a couple years old. I think 2017, I believe. There it is, 2017. So, which means it was written in 2016. So, first, um, you want to make a case for what you're doing. So, in your executive summary, because you would be presenting this to the client, ideally, like if you were working with a social media marketing agency, why it's important that they consider a plan like this. Who are we trying to reach and with what objective or what message will we be reaching them? And then you wanna organize your summary along the lines of the way this whole plan is organized. And you have an outline in chapter 15 that you can follow as closely as you need to, right? So you wanna provide a general overview of all those elements that you'll cover. Um, again, it's a summary. So don't write five pages of the summary, right? Be sure and include your name and you would always include the team that created it so that if there are questions, they can be asked of those members. And then you provide the executive summary as a, as a final element. So the goal here is to set up plan acceptance by making the case for the need, describing what is contained, and then you talk about what is in the plan. And that's what your summary ends up being. You actually have to do a lot of your summary after you've completed your plan, right? Okay, so the overview is, so who are we talking about? We're talking about the industry uh, and the firm's role in the industry. So if you're doing a restaurant or a food truck, you know, how is it positioned? If you're in Houston, there's a lot of competition, right? There's a lot, there's a whole food truck culture or in Austin, there's a whole food truck culture, right? So you want to look at where it was, where it is, and where it's going. That is a paragraph or two. This is not like five pages. Again, a paragraph or two. Then talk about the competitive advantage that you see in your client or your client's brand. What do they do uniquely and differently that no one else can quite do? They might make the best burrito. I don't know. It might be that everything is um, pulled from the garden 24 hours or more recently. I, I don't know what the, what the unique selling proposition is, but for whatever campaign or element you're looking at, remember, you're not marketing the entire organization. You're focusing on an element of it or a campaign associated with it. Um, um, you're going to use social media to help them um, present and uh, emphasize that particular advantage because that's, that's what they have that no one else has. That's the secret sauce. That's the good stuff, right? And then you will describe what you're going to do in terms of social media to maintain or secure you know, that advantage. You may have that advantage, but you need to hold it and keep it. Or you may be looking at uh, communicating it, educating the market about it, because you're the only person or only brand that can do it. And you want to be able to keep, again, 
that competitive advantage. So uh, just assume everybody's an eighth grader, nobody knows what's going on and how it works. Be very specific, but don't talk down to your recipient market, right? Okay, so the first thing you do is you observe, right? You look at the social media brand health out there for your client. So if a stranger were to go and look at all the things that have been posted on Yelp and everything else about what this supposed food truck that I'm making up here, um, what are we finding? If we look at sentiment, that is the smiley face, the frowny face, or the neutral face, like I loved it or it was okay and I was hungry, that the second one's neutral. Um, I'll never go back again. I waited 20 minutes to get french fries. That's negative. That's called negative. And you may find that it's super negative on Yelp and super positive on Facebook. I don't know what you'll find. Maybe the food looks pretty and tastes terrible. Let's see, that would be Yelp would be negative and um, Instagram would be positive, right? reach how many people follow them on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram and, and Yelp and so on, right? Um, in terms of company posts, are they out on social media? If so, what is their persona like? Uh, is it positive, neutral, or negative? Sometimes um, small business owners can be highly combative on social media. You might want to work to fix that, right? And then feedback. Again, um, there are a couple of brands I follow just looking at the kind of feedback they get. It's real interesting to see how it changes according to what the company generates. So if it's a call to action, you know, a discounted items, uh, I like Godiva candy. It's always talking about, you know, free shipping, order now, um, discounted items. And that generates one kind of response while a new product will generate a different kind of response. And then it's good to look at how the owner is responding to user comments, if at all. Is it a day, a week, an hour? How connected are they to their audiences on social media? And then you're going to conduct a SWOT analysis. This is also an activity that you will do for a grade, but then you could take it and place it into your um, plan that you're working on. So remember that opportunities and threats are external. So a threat could be a change in legislation that requires a 20% tax on a certain kind of food, for example. Um, opportunities might be that um, food trucks were prohibited from being within the city limits and now they're going to be allowed in the city limits. Um, or in parking lots or something like that. Maybe, you know, the municipally owned parking lots. Those are external. Those are things over which you don't have control of how they exist to, to, to most extent. We often think of threats um, more internally, but we shouldn't. So a threat is something that's going to happen. Um, a threat is another competitor coming in or lots of things happening that make it harder for your client to do business. But it's not something that you have control over. Taxes are going up, uh, the economy is changing. That can be an opportunity or a threat, right? Strengths and weaknesses are what you do well, or your client does well, and what your client does not do well. Perhaps your client only has one food truck and the weakness is that there's only two people available ever to work in that food truck. So that means it would be very difficult to um, be in more than one place at a time. And it also limits the number of hours if there are only two employees total and no plans to add any. So that's a weakness. A strength might be that, um, you know, everything's prepared, you know, before the truck goes on the road at 10 o'clock in the morning. I, I, again, I don't know, but just remember strengths and weaknesses are internal opportunities and threats are external. And honestly, if you don't know how that works, Google it. Now, the other thing to do is to use the questions in table 15.2 for a social media SWOT analysis. It asks a few different questions and you'll find it extremely useful in helping you develop a SWOT analysis. Know your SWOT analysis does not have to have 100 elements, but it should be robust enough to guide your social media strategy, all right? 
And then this is, of course, to conduct a competitive analysis. You look at your strengths and opportunities um, together. You look at your weaknesses and opportunities. Then you look at your strengths and your threats and your weaknesses and threats. And you create strategies for each of those situations. You don't have to act on all of them, but you need to be aware of them. And there are going to be some that are more important to take advantage of now than others. Then you begin to set goals. Now that you understand the client a little better and you can identify where a true competitive advantage can be developed. And remember, it may not be the competitive advantage that your client believes they already have. So it may be an, a, an opportunity combined with an industry threat that makes life look really, really good for you right now. Um, so there are general social media marketing goals. You can use those out of chapter two, but you'll want to be very specific for your client. And remember, it's not always about producing new products or ideas. Sometimes it's just about getting into social media because so many are not there yet. They're relying on old or traditional media strategies. Plumbing companies and home services firms often don't get into social media as well as they should. And so they do what keeps working for them. Okay. But social media is always a brand building strategy, almost always. And as your brand improves and strengthens in some area, it's going to affect customers favorably. If it's affecting them unfavorably, you should drop the strategy immediately, obviously. And then finding which of the strategies to work on to make sure that your client reaches its goals is critical. So you, this again, it's, it's detailed in chapter two, which you've already read, but uh, use that information. Okay, so when you identify the target market, and this is true for any customer experience work that you ever do, you may want to develop personas. Personas are like, what is our typical client? So our typical client is between, you know, 24 and 29, um, works within two miles of where we park our truck. Uh, so they're employed, right? They're, uh, they they um, um, are often single or have their first child on the ground at home. Um, they use social media. They live off of their phone and they are real busy, but they want a healthy meal. So, you know, you, people develop personas for segments. So you can develop a persona for your particular social media marketing plan and campaign. You can read more about Forrester's technographics profile. It's very interesting. Then you select the platform. What are you going to use? And what is the basis for using that? So in um, chapter 12 of your textbook, there's a lot of discussion about the benefits of using um, and the reasons to use specific platforms. But you will develop platforms. And of course, you'll do this part of the plan later on. But once you know who you're targeting, your audience, you choose platforms that make sense. So if you're targeting, if you are targeting tweenies, tweens, you know, very, very young, which you probably won't be, but if you were, you probably would not use LinkedIn, right? Um, if it's something that has a huge visual component, Instagram may be one of your primary platforms. Um, if it's educational, maybe LinkedIn and Instagram. I, I, I don't know which you'll choose, but just be aware that there are certain places where you can reach your target market, uh, your persona, personas, persona is another way of putting that um, with specific communities. Um, there are on Facebook, there are tons of, for example, um, mommy communities where People who live in particular neighborhoods all kind of keep track of what's going on. Next door has helped develop a lot of that, you know, that came with the, the ring um, cameras and home protection services ring. Um, they have something called, I think it's called next door. And it's like, every time anything happens in the neighborhood, everybody knows about it, but there are actually communities 
where parents communicate with each other about, you know, cars left on the street or service or the best pizza place or, you know, who they're getting to, to do their lawns or, or um, the schools where their children are going. And that's often a great resource. I didn't know about that until two years ago. And then of course you want to have tactics that fit each platform. The example here is Facebook. So it's great for working, for working with interacting with the end consumer, not somebody who refers or recommends, but the actual user, buyer, um, the person considering it. You can actually help them become aware of a product or become interested in a product or even change how they view it. When we do research, we often find that people say, oh, I always thought they were a such and such, and now I, I see they're, they're this instead. And I, I tried them one time with a coupon and I really like them. So now actually we go there once a week. This is how it happens. That's what social media does. Okay, so there's more on Facebook just to, to uh, give you an idea of how that might work. Um, obviously with Facebook, there are certain things that you would share on Facebook and other items or elements that would not be appropriate. So you have to update it, but you have to be appropriate, right? Okay. And this is the kind of information that you'll find not only here, but you'll find a lot of this uh, in chapter 15 and chapter 12. This were tactics for a particular company that's an example in, in chapter 15. But if you look in chapter 12, they have what is appropriate and the kinds of things that can be implemented, kinds of tactics can be implemented for each of the primary platforms. Then the next step is monitoring. So evaluate, how's it going? How's it working? How will you manage and measure and monitor the campaign that would be implemented? And then you want to look at the tools that will be used. In your case, you will probably not um, commit to something like Radian 6, which is very expensive, but you can do it do it manually and you can recommend that the client use a particular monitoring tool to quote unquote listen to mine to do sentiment analysis that kind of thing and then after that you tweak it you tune it you adjust what you're doing maybe you drop one line of messaging and add another because that seemed to create more likes or more hearts or more shares because it was good, not because it was bad. Make sure it's good. And then finally, budgeting. There is a cost to social media marketing. You won't be spending money, but there is a cost to social media marketing. And it usually comes with the monitoring, uh, the message development, who takes pictures, who uses images, who gets the videos loaded up. I mean, usually owners are too busy to do it, so they have to pay someone to do it. And then of course you wanna look at its efficacy. So was it able to generate a greater number of likes? Are we seeing more people show up at the taco truck, at the, maybe it's not a taco truck, it's a food truck window when we um, talk about fresh or when we talk about steak fries or when we talk about smoothies or whatever. This is how you, you use your monitoring and your other metrics, then you create your return on investment. Was the investment in effort, did it pay off in the long run? That's the big question. And this, I was actually asked this question at a presentation earlier this week. How do you get the C-suite to buy into doing this kind of work? Whether it's uh, um, measuring or even doing any kind of social media investment, doing a plan and then executing that plan, meaning implementing that plan. You need to know the C-suite. You need to be able to communicate what the benefit is, what the payoff is. Um, there will always be details in the budget because it's always, what's it gonna cost me? And when am I gonna get that money back? How long will it take? Will it take three months or three years? Keep it in months, please. And then of course you close the deal. This is pretty normal. So I hope this gives you a quick overview of the marketing plan that you are going to put together for your proposed 